David Smith here with one more flip classroom math video in the rain. Three tips before we start. First, you can speed up or slow down the playback if that helps you digest the content. Second, you can pause the video anytime and catch up with your notes. Lastly, you could turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the bottom of the screen. Today's lesson covers parts of circles. So we're gonna deal with arcs, chords, and sectors, and also segments. So check this out. Here's my circle, center zero, and I've got some radii going from zero to A and zero to B. And remember, all your radii are equal um, in a circle. In fact, the, the definition of a circle is all points equidistant from a center point. So this, this circle, circle O, is all the points that are the same distance away from O. And that makes our circle. Okay, so let's take a look at our first part of a circle. This is an arc, arc AB. This is the part of the circle that's between these two points. Now there's two kinds of arcs. There are major arcs and minor arcs. So think for a minute about what those might be with A and B. All right, let's take a look at that. So the minor arc is just the shortest distance between A and B. And that's the one that you would intuitively think of when we talked about arc AB. But there's a second arc, and that's the major arc. And that's the arc that goes the other way, all the way around from A to B that way. So the minor arc is the shortest distance along the circle, and the major arc is the longest distance. Now let's talk about sectors. So you can see I've shaded this sector. The sector is the region bounded by two radii and an arc. So in this case, radii OA and OB and arc AB. Those are the three boundaries of this particular sector of the circle. So just for your notes, I've added a definition of a sector. It's an area bounded by two radii and an arc. Indeed, this sector there. Now let's talk about a chord. You can see I've drawn labeled a chord on the circle. See if you can think of a good definition for a chord. So the definition of a chord is just a line segment between two points that are on the circle. Now I want you to call your attention to the fact that an arc and a chord are very similar. Their endpoints are two points on the circle, but there's a fundamental difference. The arc follows the surface of the circle, the curved line, the, the part of the circumference of the circle. The chord just cuts straight through. Notice how this is a line. Remember, a line is straight, that's linear. Whereas an arc is the shortest distance along the circle, so not a line. All right, let's look at this last one. And I think this vocabulary term is a little confusing. It's called a segment. Now, it may be called something else in other textbooks, but our textbook, the IB textbook, calls it a segment, which makes me think that this term is used sort of internationally, maybe most common. But possibly there's better terms that capture what this really is. Because a segment makes me think of a line segment, okay? But this is an area. This is a region. So this segment of a circle is an area bounded by an arc and a chord. Makes total sense. Here's my arc. Here's my chord. My segment is that region there inside the circle. Let's do a couple quick little problems about arc length and sector area. So first off, let's define some variables. I've put a, a diagram here with some measurements on it. We're going to use that to do some calculations. And what I'm giving you here are some variables. So our radius, we know this. In this diagram, our radius is 8 centimeters marked on it. Second thing, theta here is the central angle in radians, okay? So we don't use degrees with this formula, we use radians. So I've marked that here. The angle's going from here to here, theta equals three pi over four. Now, pause the video for a second, think about three pi over four in this diagram. How is that reasonable? Okay, check this out. If I were to go all the way around to here, if I went halfway around the circle, that would be 180 degrees, which is pi radians. So three pi over four is three quarters of a pi radians, which kind of makes sense. This doesn't look like all the way around. It looks like, yeah, that could be three quarters of the way around. If we wanted to find the length of that arc, that portion of the circumference of the circle, 
from A to B, we use this formula. Arc length L is R theta. Pretty simple formula, it's just R theta. So go ahead and pause the video, do the plug-in, and calculate this arc length. All right, so when I do this, I do my plug-in step, arc length L equals eight centimeters times three pi over four radians, which gives me 24 pi over four, which reduces down to six pi centimeters. And you can leave your pi's in the answer. In fact, your prompt for that is if it says give your exact answer, don't use the pi button on your calculator and get some decimal approximation of this. Write six pi centimeters because that's exact. So that's one of the benefits of staying in radians is you don't have approximate, you have exact answers. Okay, now let's take a look at sector area. So that would be the area of this sector. I can shade it just so we know what we're talking about. It's that area of that slice of the circle. So here's the formula for that. It's one half r squared times theta in radians. So go ahead and pause the video, plug in from our diagram to this formula and calculate the sector area. All right, so here's how I did that. I took my formula, I plugged in my eight for r, it's r squared, so eight squared, and then I plugged in my, uh, my angle theta in radians. Now, I didn't haul out my calculator to do this. I used canceling and what I could do with mental math. So I squared my eight, that's 64, but then I immediately multiplied it by one half, that's 32. So now I have 32 times three pi over four. 32 over four reduces down to eight. So that's eight times three. So I get 24 pi centimeters squared. So again, I'm leaving my pi in my answer, so it's exact, and I put my correct units, which in this case is centimeters squared because this is area, which is a squared quantity. Let's do a little bit more of a complex problem. The calculations are pretty much the same as the two I showed you a minute ago, but there's some critical thinking required to get into this problem. So let's check it out. So here's my circle, okay? I've marked my radius and a theta, and I've marked um, a chord, and I have an arc, and I have a sector, and I have a segment, okay? Now, I've got some givens. Here we're given that theta is two pi over three radians, so that's the measure of that angle. And we're given r is six centimeters. So r here is six centimeters. That means OB is six, and so is OA. Now, here's the prompt. Find the area of the shaded segment. Again, that's a tricky word. My mind goes to line segment, but in this case, the segment means a region. That's this region here bounded by arc AB and chord AB. Okay? Also, a little nuance here. If we don't say minor arc, that's the one we're gonna go to. If I say arc AB, I'm not talking about this arc, the major arc AB. So I think that's a convention that we can stick with, is that if you don't hear minor or major specified, we mean the minor arc. Okay, so I want you to pause that video for a second and think about, in general, how are we gonna find the area of the segment? Because as you'll realize, we didn't have a formula for that. We had a couple other formulas, but no formula for that. So think for a minute, jot down maybe some words or some rough kind of approximations for what you need to calculate to find that area. So when you're given a task to find a quantity that you don't have a direct formula for, then what you do is you look for other related quantities and see if you can do a couple calculations and combine them or subtract them or do something to get the thing that they want. So in this case, that's exactly what we need to do. We can calculate the area of this whole sector. That's not what we want, but it's, it's gonna help us get to what we want. So if we can find the area of the sector and subtract the area of the triangle from it, what's left is the area of the segment, which is what we're after. So this is why I wrote this general little formula here. Segment area is gonna be the sector area minus the triangle's area itself. And I put triangle AOB, so that's triangle AOB. So presto, now we're there. Now what I'd like you to do is write the next step in the calculation. Sector area is gonna stay the same, but now you're gonna be able to substitute some plug and chug for this one and some plug and chug for that one. But I'm gonna give you a little tip on that. 
This is prior knowledge from our last unit, the formula you're gonna need for this triangle area here. So pause the video, maybe flip back through your notes to get that formula and then come back. All right, so I wrote out the next step. I have my sector area, which is just my one half times my R squared times my theta in radians, so that's two pi over three. So that's my sector area. Now I went back to the last chapter for the area formula for a triangle with sine. And as you recall, that is one half times one side times the other side, which in this case, in this triangle, these two sides are the same. There are, which is six. So that's six times six or six squared times the sine of the angle between them. So it's the sine of theta, which is two pi over three. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to pause the video and simplify these on down, but leave your pi's where they are. All right, so now we have to deal with our pi's because I cannot leave pi in my answer when I run it through the sine function. The sine function is gonna turn an angle into some kind of a decimal. It, that's what happens. Um, not every angle, but most of these sort of oddball -y angles are the ones that aren't perfectly like 90 and 180 and 270 and things like that. So you're going to get a decimal out of that. So we can't have an exact answer. So what we're going to do, you have two choices. One is that you can put your calculator into radians and just do 2 times pi divided by 3. That gives you the number of radians, the decimal approximation of how many radians you have. And then press the sign button. And that will give you the value of the sine of 2 pi over 3 in radians. And then you can multiply that by 18 to get that area, get that triangle area. The other option is you could just convert 2 pi over 3 radians into degrees and then leave your calculator in degrees and go that route. So I'm just going to show you that one. Remember, to get 2 degrees, it's 2 pi over 3 times 180 over pi. That's how we go from radians to degrees. So now I can cancel my pi's out. My 3 into 180 goes to a 1 and 60. So now I pretty much just have 2 times 60. So this is 120 degrees. Okay. So now I can plug 120 in for my sine function and do my calculation and finish it off. And once you plug that all in, either way, change your calculator to radians, don't bother converting to degrees, or convert to degrees and do that, you'll end up with 22.1 centimeters squared, three sig figs, we are done. All right, I'm gonna lead you through a critical thinking exercise that builds on what we just did, okay? So notice my diagram is the same. My segment area shaded here is the same. But now I'm not giving you what r and theta are. And now the prompt is, given r and theta, create a general formula for the area of a segment. So go ahead and pause the video and write a first step for that. Okay, so now I've just written that out. Here's the area of my sector, one half r squared theta, and here is the area of my triangle using the triangle area formula with sine, which is one half times the side A times side B, which in, again, in this case is the two radii and the angle between them theta, it's sine theta. So there is my general formula. Now, we like our formulas to be as simple as possible to enable them to be used quickly to get results. So I want you to pause the video and simplify that down as fast as you can. All right, here are the steps that I use to derive this formula. I went ahead and simplified. I've got a one half R squared in both of these terms. So I could factor it out one half R squared. That leaves theta minus sine theta. And then for elegance or simplicity's sake, I just put R squared times theta minus sine theta all over two, and that works. So we like formulas that are quick and easy. This might be a more critical thinking based question that you might see. Thanks for watching. Just before you go, make sure to write down any questions that you have so that you can bring them to our next class and get them answered. Also, remember that you can watch the video again if you want to deepen your understanding. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, please click like or subscribe.